Good morning, church, and welcome as we gather together to hear the word this morning. I think you'll find that starting with this week, perhaps some of the stories may be familiar to you, but I ask that you open up your hearts to receive them anew. Let us center ourselves for worship this day. God formed man. Out of the dirt of the ground and the breath of God's spirit, God gave humanity purpose to work and care for the ground. God commanded humanity in loving kindness. Let us enter into the story of creation anew this day. Would you join me in an attitude of prayer? Most good and gracious God, as we look at your word, we see that you created all around us. And yet, O oh God, we have taken and abused your creation. We have not treated each other as you want us to treat us. But we know that we have taken your good gift, that which you have called very good, in fact, and we've disregarded it. Well, we've disregarded ourselves. We haven't listened to you. We have not followed your word. And so, O oh Lord, as we give our hearts to you this day, we ask that you create something new within us. That your truth settle into our spirits again, O oh God. And then you send us out to proclaim it. It is in Jesus' most precious name that we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. Friends, we know that God created and created us, in fact. And when we come together this day, let us confess the ways that we have disregarded the image of God in our own spirits and the image of God in others. For ways that we have forsook the mission that God gave us. Would you join me now? in the prayer of confession. We pray together saying, Lord, we confess that while you created us and guided us, that we shrink. We broke your trust with our disobedience and as a result, fractured our relationship with you. If we are honest, precious Lord, we do this again and again, but we do not listen for your voice or heed the call of your kingdom. Forgive us, O Lord, do not give up on us. Restore us, we pray. Amen. Brothers and sisters, hear the good news. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Praise be to God. Friends, let us come together and affirm our faith this day. Would you join me in the Apostles' Creed? And we say together, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and stood at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Friends, we don't have a psalter to hear this day, but we do have a hymn of reflection. One that reminds us that God is King of all creation. Will you join me in this reflective reading of Praise to the Lord, the Almighty. We join together saying, Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. O oh, my soul, praise him, for he is thy help and salvation. 
all ye who hear, now to his temple draw near. Join me in glad adoration. Would you join me in a time reflecting upon these powerful words? Let us enter into a time of silence and prayer. Most gracious God, we admit that sometimes we act as if we are the kings and queens over creation. And yet, O oh Lord, it is you who created first. It is you who is worthy of all praise, O oh Lord. It is you who took the dust of the earth and breathed life into it. It is you who breathed life into us. And so, Lord, center our hearts again, giving you the adoration that you alone are doing. In Jesus' name, amen. Give us a moment and we'll join together in our children's time. Hi, everybody. I hope you are having a great week, and I'm so glad that you came today to join us in worship. Now, if you have joined us for our midweek Zoom calls, our Bible study story time, then you may remember something special we did with Play-Doh. If you haven't came to that, that's fine. I want to know, though, how many of you have ever played with Play-Doh? Probably most of us, right? I love to play with Play-Doh because you can squish it onto all sorts of different shapes. Sometimes there's even cookie cutters you can use to, to get a specific shape or molds that you can put it into. So many different things can be created out of Play-Doh. And whenever I play with Play-Doh, it reminds me that in my creation, whatever I make, that it's not as great as what God has created. See, God created you and me. God created the grass and the flowers, the sky and the clouds, the rain. God created the rainbow. God created so, so much. And when we play with Play-Doh, that's just a reminder of the excitement we get when we create. And I think God has that same excitement over us. Only I think it's a little bit more than that, too. See, God loves us. God loves us, the people God created. And because of that, even when we screw up and even when we stray, God invites us to come back because of the gift of Jesus Christ. And so next time you are making something of Play-Doh, take time to thank God that God created you. Take time to thank God for all the different things God created. And remember that you are loved. Let us pray. Most good and gracious God, you are the greatest creator of all. Nothing that we can make as humans, oh God, even begins to be as awesome as what you have made. And Lord, we ask that when we do create something, that, oh God, you remind us that you also created, that you created us. And Lord, when we struggle with another person, may we remember that you created them too. Lord, show us once more the beauty of all all of your creation, we pray. Amen. Just a reminder, this week we're not going to join together on Zoom for our special Bible story time, but it will be posted as a video on the Facebook sites if you want to still watch that anytime you'd like. And also, if you'd like to have the children's bulletins that you normally pick up on Sunday morning, that we're happy to mail those out to you. You just have to let the church office or myself know, and we will put those in the mail to you each and every week. I hope you all have a wonderful week until we see each other again.
Friends, we are going back to the beginning today to study God's word together, and we're going to be in selected verses in Genesis 2 and in Genesis 3. So if you'd like to follow along, we're going to start in Genesis 2, and then we'll move on. Let us turn now to God's word. Friends, we're going to start in Genesis 2, starting in verse 4, if you'd like to follow along, and then I'll indicate when we are moving on to other verses. Genesis 2, starting in verse 4. Hear now these words. In the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens, when no plant of the field was yet in the earth, and no herb of the field had yet sprung up, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, but there was no one to till the ground. But a stream would rise from the earth and the water the whole face of the ground. Then the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being. Moving forward to verse. 15. The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to till it and feed it. And the Lord God commanded the man, You may freely eat of every tree of the garden, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall die. Then going on to chapter 3, starting in verse 1. Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the other wild animals that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God say, you shall not eat from any tree in the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat the fruit of all the trees in the garden. But God said, you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the middle of the garden, nor shall you touch it, for you shall die. But the serpent said to the woman, you will not die, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. And she also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both were opened, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together, making loincloths for themselves. They heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees. Church, this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O oh Lord, as we come to the story of creation, we ask, O oh Lord, that you speak to us through it. We ask, O oh Lord, that you open up our ears, open up our eyes, open up our hearts to receive that which you offer to us this day. Lord, speak, for we, your servants, are listening. And all God's people said, Amen. All societies and different religions have some sort of creation story. Some sort of story of how the world and how they as individuals came into being. And it's told from their perspective. But not so with the Christian creation story. It's a story that we share with our Jewish brothers and sisters, and it's uniquely our story, told more about God than about us, at least at first. 
but then tells the story of how God gave us as humans a purpose and ultimately how we strayed from the way and the will of our creator. The story of creation threads itself through the rest of scripture, the whole way from Genesis to Revelation, reminding us of who we are and how we got to where we are today. But it also reminds us that where we find ourselves here and now, well, that, my friends, is not the end of the story. There is more to come. From now, throughout the month of October, we're going to go back to the beginning, back to the very beginning of Scripture to talk about the stories that we find there that inform our faith, that inform our identity that remind us who we are as the people of God. Now, many of these stories may be ones that you already know, may be ones that you heard a hundred times over before. But I want you to set that aside. I want you to set aside what you think you already know about these stories and simply listen. Listen to the story like you're hearing it for the first time. Listen with the curiosity and wonder of a child. Let new details pique your attention. In other words, make room in your hearts for the scripture to truly speak. Too many times when we hear God's word, we think that we already know it all that we've already heard it enough times, so we shut ourselves off from it. We unintentionally put up roadblocks. But one of the most beautiful things about scripture is that God uses it to continually speak to us today. I may read or hear the same story again and again and again, but by God's mercy and grace, that scripture meets me anew right where I'm at in that moment and speaks to my heart again. So my friends, with that in mind, let's go back to the beginning, the very beginning, to the story of creation that is found in Genesis chapter 2. God created everything, and God said that it was good and beautiful and pleasing. God made the earth and the plants. God made the rain that watered the ground. Then God made man. But God didn't just create man. God formed him from the dust of the earth and breathed into his body the very breath of life. And God didn't just form man in this amazing way. God created that first human who was then named Adam with a purpose. God took that man and placed him in the garden and told him to tell it. Told him to take care of it. Man had a mission from God. Then God gave man rules to help guide him saying that he could eat of any tree that he desired in the garden except for the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. But humanity eventually did not listen to God. They broke trust with their disobedience. A crafty serpent came and tricked the woman, telling the woman if she ate from that tree that is forbidden that she surely wouldn't die, that God was just keeping something good and wonderful from her. So both the woman and the man ate from the tree. They came to realize that they were naked. They also realized that they had been disobedient and they hid themselves from God. There have been so many depictions of this story that we find in Genesis 2 and 3 in particular. There's been paintings and poems, plays and songs, but perhaps my favorite depiction was the play and the musical that John Herod and Stephen Schwartz made called Children of Eve. This musical in two acts tells part of the story in Genesis 
from creation through the time of Noah. And in a particular song entitled Childhood's End, Eve is so excited and explains to God, whom Adam calls father, that it was okay to eat the fruit. Didn't hurt them. They didn't die. And so all must be well. And she's filled with the wonder and the sight of being able to see things and have this new understanding in knowledge. To which God replies this heartbreaking line. And I quote, Eve, you see too much. Don't you see you have to go? This is a place of innocence, a place for children, and you are a child no more. Sometimes that depiction of Adam and Eve as innocent children makes us feel uncomfortable, probably because we've strayed so far from that today. We want to make our own decisions. We want to be grown up. We want to be independent people. But isn't that part of what got Adam and Eve in trouble in the first place, my friends? God gave Adam a purpose, a mission, to till the ground and be a caretaker for the garden. God gave one rule and one rule alone to act as a guardrail to help steer the creation, his creation, his children, Adam and Eve, from danger. And yet, and yet, they made a choice to go and do that one thing. They abandoned their purpose, they abandoned the mission in order to do something else. They abandoned the guardrail, that one rule, when the serpent came along and was tricked, tricking them. And now here we are today. One of my first memories I had of Afra as a child was after my brothers were born. My brothers are twins, so there were three of us in my parents' house under the age of three, and my mom was gracious enough to often let me help. And one day, I wanted her to help make the bottles. So I tried to put my doll baby's bottle on the hot stove along with my brothers where they were in a pan. Thankfully, I didn't burn myself. Thankfully, I wasn't hurt, but I could have been. I'm sure I've been told countless times before to stay away from the hot stove, but I let my strong will push that aside in favor of making my own decision of what helping looked like. Friends, is not the same true for each of us even now today if we were left up to our own devices. While we may not be bold enough to say so, we try to live our lives by our own way, our own rules, defining for ourselves what is good and what is evil. Like Adam and Eve, we ignore the guardrails, we ignore the rules, and as a result, we break trust through our disobedience, and we ultimately fracture our relationship with God. But there's another way that we can be like Adam and Eve as well, one that we don't talk about enough when it comes to this particular story. Genesis is the only creation story that I know of where humanity is specifically created. In other words, humanity was just an accident in some other versions of creation story, a fluke, something that just happened. But not so in Genesis, not so in the story of the Jewish and Christian version of creation. No, we were not just created by accident, we were created on purpose, with a purpose, my friends. Not something that is meaningless just to occupy our attention and time, but a purpose that had a role in creation. In other words, God gave us a mission. But how quickly was that mission abandoned when Adam and Eve started listening to the snake? After their initial disobedience, there was another disobedience. They were no longer fulfilling their call. 
They were to be tilling the ground. They were to be caring for the garden. But instead, they made clothes for themselves and they hid from God. We too abandon the mission, do we not? Now, our mission may not be exactly the same as Adam and Eve's today, but it's just as clearly given to us by our Lord and Savior. Go out and make disciples. But how often do we stray from that mission? Or what things do we try to substitute that mission with because we want to have our own definition of good and evil and the gospel? When God's command was broken, humanity, my friends, stopped living into their mission, stopped living into their call and their purpose the same way that they did before. But that's not an excuse to continually do so today. Because this scripture from Genesis, church, is not the totality of our story. It's not the end. The Apostle Paul wrote to the church in Rome, for if the many die through one man's trespasses, many more shall surely have grace of God through the free gift of the grace of one man, Jesus Christ, abandoned for the many. See, Adam's disobedience may have led to sin and abandoning the mission, but Jesus came, my friends, and gave us new life, a new mission, and a new purpose. The question is, what are we going to choose today? Are we going to choose to follow? Are we going to heed the call of our Savior? Or are we going to continue to do things on our own terms, in our own way? From death to life. From self-purpose to call. From abandoning the mission to giving us a mission as big as this world. Let us go forth, people of God, as ambassadors of Jesus Christ to tell the story, our story, the story of creation, fall, and ultimately the story of our redemption. Are you willing to go and bear witness? Amen. Friends, as we turn now to a time of prayer or reminder to share your prayer request if you feel so led. There are many ways to do it. You can do it through the chat function. You can reach out to the church office or myself. You can also share them through a Google form that's found on the Facebook page. But friends, let us share our hearts, share our joy, share our needs with one another so we can support each other along this journey of would you join me in prayer? Most good and gracious God, as we come together this day, the world around us seems to be on fire. The world around us is literally on fire, oh God, in some states where the actions of one have displaced many. Sometimes it's a fire, O oh Lord, that seems to distract us from our mission and call. Sometimes, O oh God, it's a fire that comes from seeing illness spread far and wide and touch the lives of those we know and those we don't know. But Lord, as we look around at the destruction being wrought in this world, well, we know this isn't your story. This God, you are calling us to care for one another. You're calling us to be good stewards, not just of the Garden of Eden, but to all that we have surrounding us here and now today. The Lord, you call us to be good stewards, good caretakers of one another's hearts, one another's lives. Well, we admit that sometimes we're not very good at this. <laughs> Sometimes, oh God, we stray. Sometimes, oh God, we hurt other people. Sometimes, oh God, we act in ways that are not in line at all with who you call us to be. So, Lord, we bring our request to you this day. We ask that you help us care for the names that are here. 
Will you help us care for the concerns of each other, oh God, by continually bringing them to your prayer? By going forth into the world to be your hands and feet, oh God, and that you remind us who we are, that we are yours, that you created us and that you called us very good, and that you, oh Lord, are the one who gives us purpose and a mission. So, Lord, embolden us to go out and to live in that way as your disciples, as we come together and pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. We forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, as we conclude today's service, I want to let you know that most of the things that we offer throughout the week are on hold for this week as I would be on vacation, but the Zoom prayer and scripture time on Monday will still be available on Facebook at 6 p.m. on Monday, and our Bible story time for the children and families on Wednesday at 5 p.m. will also still be, involved, still be available on the Facebook site but we will not be having our Thursday activities of a time of praying for one another at noon or the Bible study that's offered at 7.30. Friends, as we conclude the service, I want to once again thank you for your faithfulness. I want to thank you for giving your tithes, your offerings, your gifts to the mission and ministry of this parish. I want to thank you for living in the mission that we've offered ourselves in ways big and small, to make God's good news known, even here and now. Friends, you are a blessing to many. So may you go forth. Go forth and continue to bless folks by bearing witness, by telling that old, old story way back from the beginning, the story of Genesis, but also remind folks is not the end of the story where Jesus Christ has come and offered to rewrite, to rewrite our hearts as followers. So let us go forth and bear witness to Jesus Christ alone. Amen and amen.